Hello, I'm Mark Christ. I'm the head of adult programming for the Central Arkansas Library System, and I'm also a Civil War historian. I've written a number of, uh, written and edited a number of books on the Civil War in Arkansas. And today we'll be talking about the Battle of Arkansas Post, which was uh, fought January 10 and 11 of 1863. It was the first uh, battle of a series of events that would lead uh, by the end of the year to Union control of the Arkansas River Valley. So on September 28, 1862, uh, this man, Lieutenant General Theophilus Holmes, ordered Colonel John W. Dunnington to develop uh, defenses along the Arkansas and White Rivers. Uh, Holmes was concerned that Union troops would use those rivers as an avenue to attack Little Rock. Now Dunnington was the captain of the CSS Pontchartrain, which was on one of only two uh, Confederate gunboats that uh, ever served in Arkansas waters. And for the location of his first fort, he chose uh, Arkansas Post, which is the first high ground in, um, along the Arkansas River. Arkansas Post was, of course, one of the most important historic sites in, in Arkansas. It had been the territorial capital, and then it was also the site of the last skirmish of the American Revolution. He built a stout fortification that he called uh, Fort Hindman. It featured, uh, it was uh, armored on the sides with oak timbers and railroad ties. Uh, the armaments included eight nine-inch Dahlgren rifles from the uh, Pontchartrain, uh, 10 pounder Parrot rifles, and six pounder smooth bores. But, um, there were also trenches dug between the uh, fort and post bayou uh, to complete the fortifications of, of the site. Uh, the garrison was primarily uh, Texans, uh, but also uh, uh, the 19th Arkansas Infantry was also part of the garrison there. And the men serving at Arkansas Post were not happy with the location. Colonel Roger Q. Mills wrote, if they attack us here at high water, it will be an accident if we are not all made uh, prisoners. While Captain Gil McKay of the W.P. Lane, WP Lane Rangers dubbed it Fort Donaldson No. 2. The commander of the garrison was uh, Brigadier General Thomas Churchill, who took command on December 10. And the Texans weren't really happy having an Ar Arkansan uh, running the show there. One Texan called uh, Churchill a little bit of a spike tail, snaffle bit dude of an Arkansas Brigadier General. Uh, Dunnington would uh, have control of the, uh, the guns at Fort Hindman, and his uh, sailors from his Pontchartrain would man those, uh, those weapons. So the Arkansas Post was largely ignored until December 28, when uh, Leroy Nutt's Louisiana Cavalry Company uh, went to the Mississippi River and fired on the steamboat Blue Wing, uh, captured her and brought her up to Arkansas Post, where Theophilus Perry of the garrison wrote that uh, the Blue Wing was loaded with flour and coffee, whiskey, salt, apples, ammunition, guns and pistols, and several other tricks too numerous to mention. Well, the Union did pay attention to that, and uh, this man, General John McClernand, McClernand uh, hatched a plan for an Army-Navy uh, operation against the Post. Now, McClernand was a, a political general, though he did uh, perform ably at Belmont, Missouri, and at Shiloh, but he was uh, hated by many of the regular officers, uh, Union officers, because uh, he had a habit of jumping over the chain of command and communicating directly with his old friend Abraham Lincoln. Uh, William Tecumseh Sherman called McClernand, quote, the meanest man we ever had in the West with a mean, gnawing ambition, ready to destroy everyone who would cross him. McClernand met with uh, Sherman and Admiral, Admiral David uh, Dixon Porter aboard the flagship Black Hawk on January 4. Uh, Porter and, and Sherman had actually already talked a few days before about possibly moving against Arkansas Post. But uh, it was a tense meeting, and Porter told Sherman of, of uh, McClernand he did not like him, that in Washington before coming west he had been introduced to him by President Lincoln, and he had taken a strong prejudice against him. Sherman said, I begged him for the sake of harmony to waive that, which he promised to do. So McClernand will command the Army of the Mississippi. Uh, most of the Union troops had uh, involved in this expedition had fought at Chickasaw, Chickasaw Bayou, Mississippi, a week or so before, where they had been uh, thoroughly whipped. Sherman will command the uh, 15th Corps of the Army of the Mississippi. 
and while Brigadier General George W. Morgan will lead the 13th Corps. And that must have, uh, have, have shamed, uh, must have angered Sherman, who blamed Morgan for the loss at Ch Chickasaw Bayou. So this army will consist of around 30,000 infantry, 1,000 cavalry, plus 40 cannon and artillery batteries. Porter's fleet will include the uh, city-class Eads Ironclads Baron de Cab, Cincinnati, and Louisville, the timber-clad Lexington, the tin-clads Rattler, Forest Rose, New Era, and Glide, and the Ellet Ram Monarch. Collectively, these uh, vessels carry more than 75 cannon, including 14 that are 8 inches or larger, and uh, also the, the flotilla will include 60 steamboats carrying troops. Churchill's command, on the other hand, consists of around 5,000 men, all told. So on January 9, uh, the flotilla takes the White River cutoff to sneak up on the Arkansas Post uh, uh, garrison. And a rebel, some rebel horsemen spot them and race back to the post where, quote, the whole camp went into an uproar all at once. Soldier under James Dex Deschler and John Dunnington sent to uh, forward lines of rifle pits as the transports began to disgorge Union troops at uh, Frederick Nortreve's plantation. And as the sun rose on January 10, one Texan reported that once one could hardly see anything in the background except maybe smokestacks. We began shelling the uh, Confederates, and a soldier in the 55th Illinois said the gunboat slipped up and gave them a few rounds, which put them in the double quick. So these uh, forward troops uh, began falling back toward Fort Hindman. Uh, Yankee uh, infantry began to advance through swampy ground toward the uh, rebel skirmishers, uh, which is recounted in this book uh, written by W.W. Uh, uh, w. Hartzell of the uh, W.P. Lane Rangers. Uh, a great, a great first-person account of uh, of the Civil War. Uh, but Hartzell wrote that uh, here come the Yankees, dashing and splashing straight through it, and so perfectly at home as an alligator in the Red River. And as they advanced, uh, one Illinois officer wrote that the enemy was pressed back toward their works, and occasionally a squalid dead Confederate was passed, who had met a swift messenger of Reconstruction. By mid-afternoon on the uh, 10th, McClernand asked Porter to advance on Fort Hindman with his gunboats. The, ship moved around, moved, the ships moved forward around 5.30 p.m. and began taking fire as soon as they rounded the bend in the river as the sun went down. Bullets as well as shells fell about us like hail, a soldier on the Cincinnati reported. For the Yankee infantry, it was a spectacular fireworks display. A John Harper of the 113th Illinois said, the sight was beautiful. When they would fire, the boats would look like they were on fire. We could see the shells as they make a curve through the air and then burst in and over the fort. It was less appealing on the receiving end of that fire. Uh, Captain Sam Foster of the 24th Texas wrote, their first shell passed just over the top of the fort. It struck the ground about 40 feet behind us and kept rolling along, breaking bushes. It scared us all nearly to death. The roar and noise of the cannonade became awfully terrible. We had never heard anything like it. While a soldier in the uh, 6th Texas reported that the gunboats threw shells as big as wash pots with tails of fire as long as clotheslines. The Fort Hindman was, uh, was horribly battered by the fire. Uh, Seaman Justin Meacham on the Cincinnati reported that in one instance, we saw the inside of one of the casements of the fort lit up. We felt sure that one of our 10 inch shells had entered the porthole and disabled a gun, which we afterwards learned was true. Well, Dunnington's uh, gunners fought back back hard. Uh, the Louisville would have 11 killed and wounded, while the Baron de Cab suffered 17 casualties. When the Rattler tried to sail past the fort and enfilade it, she got caught in obstacles in the river. She was only 50 yards from the fort and, a, and at one and at one of them, uh, there was every prospect of her being destroyed by the enemy's shot, hitting her every time and going completely through her, Admiral Porter re reported. The Rattler did get free and sailed back to the fleet, which then fell back downriver for the evening. So while this naval battle was going on, uh, Union troops completed a line opposite the Rebel Trenches, which ran about 720 yards west of Fort Hindman. About 10 a.m., about 50 horsemen of uh, 10 p.m., about 50 horsemen in Alf Johnson's spy company slipped through the Union lines and joined the embattled garrison. 
Churchill received a telegram from Theophilus Holmes that night ordering the uh, garrison, quote, to hold out until help arrives or until all dead, which order was communicated to brigade commanders with instructions to see it carried out in spirit and letter. General Sherman, quote, crept up to a stump so close that I could hear the enemy hard at work. I could almost hear their words and was thus listening when about 4 a.m. the rebel, the bugler in the rebel camp sounded as pretty a reveille as I ever listened to. Well, the next morning, William Bentley of the 77th Illinois wrote, the day was the Sabbath, clear, calm, and beautiful. It was a day made for rest and the worship of God, not for human slaughter. An Ohio soldier noted the work the uh, Confederates had done during the night, writing, an amazing amount of fresh dirt had been thrown up, and from behind the new parapet, the guns of two, Texas, two field batteries popped up. The rebels stretched their lines further and further to keep from being flanked as the Federals moved into position. A Texan L.V. Carraway wrote that, while all was calm, General uh, Churchill on his charger rode up our lines in full Confederate uniform and said, boys, we will hold the fort or all will be shot down in these ditches. Another Texan wrote the, that the area, the area in front of the rebel lines, quote, was as thick as with blue coats as ever you saw blackbirds on a note stack in mid-morning. We found what we've been looking for, an opportunity to whip ten to one. The gunboats came up and uh, opened fire on, on Fort Hindman. Uh, Confederate Sam Foster wrote that their first shots knocked the iron off the fort. It scattered in every direction. The big square logs flew as if they were fence rails. And some of the, confire, some of the uh, cannon fire hit the Confederate trenches. Robert Chalk of the 6th Texas wrote, One shell from the gunboats fell in our lines, just under my feet. Little Frank McLaughlin was laying just in front of me. He had a big leather belt on. The shell cut him in two, and his belt was le left laying in the ditch. It also cut Andy Sutton's legs off about halfway between the knees and hips. It was awful to see the great amounts of blood gushing from his wounds. The sailors from the poncho train uh, got some payback. Frederick Davis of the Baron de Cal wrote to his parents that it has been our most desperate fight, a harder fought battle than Fort Donaldson. Our 11 inch port bow gun was struck on the muzzle and a piece of foot long knocked out. The shell came in the port and after striking the gun bursted, killing two and wounding 13 men. Another shell entered another port, dismounted a three inch gun off its carriage, passed aft, struck a stanchion, which glanced it, and it passed aft, struck through our cylinder timber, and bounded through an aperture onto the deck, passing through the privy, and went overboard. In front of the rebel lines, uh, Federal artillery opened up, joined by another battery across the river that had good enfilading uh, angle on the Confederates. Marshal Pearson of the 17th Texas wrote that the barrage was how, quote, one might easily imagine an earthquake, though showing something more substantial than molten lava. After 15 minutes of firing, Sherman orders his artillery to cease firing and uh, his uh, artillery to cease firing and his troops to move out on the Union right, reporting that the infantry, sp infantry sprang forward with a cheer. The Reds let them come close before opening uh, fire. Lieutenant Robert M. Collins of the 15th Texas remembered that our boys raved, raised up and gave what was called a rebel yell, but it did not sound anything like such as we gave when we were on the march with some pretty southern woman to shake a white rag at us, but sounded weak and had a hollow graveyard twang to it. Nonetheless, our shotguns and buck got in their work and the enemy went down like grain before the mower. John Bruegel of uh, Missouri wrote that the enemy allowed us to approach to 100 paces and then the blue beans flew into our ranks, bringing death and destruction. Since it was impossible to get over the barricade, we were all crowded into the trap and our boys fell like flies. The Union attack faltered and uh, the men began sniping at the, at the rebels. Another brigade charged on the uh, Union left and was also repulsed. The 83rd Ohio Infantry Regiment refused to move forward again, leaving the 77th Illinois to march through the demoral, demoralized Buckeyes as they moved forward. One Illinois soldier wrote that the 83rd refused to advance and we were compelled to charge over them in the face of a terrible fire from the fort. As we passed over them, we made it a matter of necessity to tramp on as many as possible, at which they threw a few old-fashioned anathemas at us. This we considered very un ungentlemanly, and especially so as it was on a Sunday. We took position about 80 yards in advance of them. An Ohio diarist recorded that the enemy seemed determined to hold the fort. The men in the ditches fought like so many tigers, and it was like running against a stone wall to attempt to drive them out.
Despite the uh, fierce Confederate resistance, the Union troops came on like a serp uh, serpent de decoying its prey. The Federal troops lay coiled around us, Lieutenant uh, Bishop wrote. The Yankees prepared to charge. Oh, what a grand sight. 40,000 men pressing forward as one man. On, on they came like an irresistible thunderbolt, Trooper Hertzel wrote. The earth was little, literally blue from one end of their line to the, to the other, L.V. Carraway remembered. And incredibly, at this uh, point in the fight, 190 soldiers of the 24th Arkansas Infantry arrived after a forced march to uh, relieve the fort. And it was at this moment that someone in Colonel uh, Robert Garland's 24th Texas uh, Regiment raised a white flag. The Yankee troops rushed into the uh, open area across from Fort Hindman and received a volley from Dunnington's troops in the 6th Texas. A soldier from the 96th Ohio wrote, that volley did more damage to than all the previous firing. Colonel Stephen Burbridge rushed forward toward the uh, fort to plant the U.S. flag on it. He was soon joined by uh, Sherman, and a Kentucky soldier there uh, remembered his uh, seeing Sherman meeting with Churchill. He wrote, both generals with their staffs were mounted, and the interview was in the center of the entrenched ground. Well, Sherman said, Churchill, I have made the very best fight in my power. And a very gallant fight you have made of it, was Sherman's very prompt response. Here for hours, they had been hurling deadly missile at each other, and yet under a little bit of, bun of white bunting, they instantly became jolly good friends. The incident was a le lesson for me. Now, Dunnington was a naval captain. Uh, and he refused to surrender to anyone other than Admiral Porter, who reported the captain growling, you wouldn't have gotten to us had it not been for your damn gunboats. At the opposite end of the line, James Deschler and his Confederates refused to surrender, not believing that Churchill had ordered it. Sherman advised uh, Churchill that the, uh, he needed to address the situation, quote, because a single shot might bring the whole of Steele's division on Deschler's brigade, and I would not be responsible for the consequences. The two generals hurried down the line uh, uh, with Churchill pausing only to exchange angry words with uh, Garland over the white flags. And on reaching the irate Deschler, Churchill said, you see, sir, that we are in their power and you may surrender. Perhaps Deschler would have been uh, comforted by Captain Sam Foster's assessment of the situation. He said, it was the only intelligible thing we could do. So then the Federals streamed into the rebel lines, and Franz Collar of the 6th Texas wrote that hardly had it been done, though the white flags raised, when the Yankees were there, thick as blackbirds. They came in and joined hands with us as if we were old acquaintances. A soldier of the 55th Illinois told his wife that our men bounded over the enemy works and received a hearty welcome from the butternuts, many of them taking our men by the hands to assist them over the breastworks, exclaiming, you've made a good haul this time, and our boys asking them where the blue wing was. Illinois uh, artillerist Charles Kemble remembered a grimmer sight as he entered the works. He said he wrote, inside they saw a rebel soldier with both legs shot off, alive and holding the stumps in his hands and swearing like a trooper. Well, Churchill uh, lost uh, 60 killed and 80 wounded, plus 4,791 prisoners, which is pretty much the whole garrison except a few who had slipped away in the initial confusion. McClernand lost 134 killed, 898 wounded, and 29 missing. Now, U.S. Grant characterized the Arkansas Post Expedition as a wild goose chase, but there is more to it than that. Uh, the Confederate loss comprised about 25% of the total rebel manpower in the Trans-Mississippi. Uh, those 5,000 men were a, a tremendous loss for the Confederacy. Uh, the battle removed the only threat to Union lines of communication on the Mississippi River during the uh, Vicksburg campaign, and it signaled a change in Union policy toward prisoners. Uh, these men who were, were, would be sent north uh, to northern POW camps instead of being exchanged at Vicksburg. It also greatly improved Union morale. One soldier uh, stated simply, Arkansas Post wiped out Chickasaw Bayou. In Arkansas, Confederate morale plummeted, and uh, uh, many uh, civilians took their slaves and fled to Texas uh, for fear that the uh, Union Army would come through and, and free their, their slaves. And it did open the Arkansas River uh, Valley to invasion, though uh, low water would prevent McClernand from advancing on to uh, Little Rock at this time. So the Union troops would move on to Vicksburg, and the uh, Southern Garrison would eventually become part of Patrick Claiborne's division of the Army of Tennessee, but all of them would remember 
the uh, two days of combat at Arkansas Post. Virgil uh, Motes, a, a veteran of the, uh, in the 48th Iowa Infantry, summed up the battle best. He wrote, while it lasted, Shiloh was nowhere. So that's my report on the Battle of Arkansas Post. If you have any uh, questions, feel free to shoot me an email at mchrist at cals.org. And thank you.